Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to DNews Plus today. I am Trace, and this week we're talking about pain. So this is episode one of three on that. Make sure you subscribe so you get all of our episodes this week. I know there are only three, and I apologize for that. I've gotten all of your tweets and your Instagram direct messages and all of the things, and I apologize. We're working really hard to try and get you back up to five episodes. Uh, we're currently looking for writing help, so contact us if you know how to write videos. Either way, you can check us out on iTunes as well. You can find that audio podcast there. This week we're going to talk about what pain is exactly and how we fight it and how different people feel differently, how painkillers work, and how you actually feel pain, because that in itself is kind of a mystery. It's going to be really exciting, so make sure you stick around. But first, what is pain? Etymology time, baby, because this is DNews Plus. Pain comes from a few different places, and I do mean the word pain. The Latin poena, meaning punishment or penalty, in late Latin, or later Latin, I guess, it changed to mean suffering and hardship. And then the Greek poene, I think, the same is retribution or penalty. There are even some sources that we found that uh, said in Old French the word pin meant punishment, as in for, like, a crime. But, you know, it depends. Either way, it, it seems to come back to this suffering, hardship, and penalty, right? Sidebar, by the way, the phrase of a pain like being annoying or irritating, that originated in 1908. You could be a pain in the neck starting in 1924 and a pain in the ass starting in 1934. I mean, they could have originated sooner, but that's what we could find. Either way, pain actually is kind of nebulous. Like, what is pain? If you had to describe it to your friend, you would use other words to describe pain, right? Like a piercing pain or a burning pain or a scratching pain. All of those are physical things. But what if it's inside of you? What if it's emotional pain? What if it's all these other things? Pain is very difficult because it's so subjective. But you could say that pain is a sensation that hurts, right? Of course, if you look up the definition of the word hurts, it means physical pain or injury. So it's kind of circular. But either way, sometimes life is like that. We will get into the specifics of what is actually happening inside of your body, what is going on with your nerves and your pain pathways a, a little bit later, but there's a bunch of synonyms for pain that we wanted to talk about. You know, discomfort and pressure and uncomfortableness and agony, which is a little on the severe side, uh, not to mention a bunch of other ones. And that brings us to how we classify it, right? If I tell you I'm having a piercing pain, you can imagine what that's like because you've probably experienced it. You can also imagine something piercing something else, right? But describing pain that's more general or more specific, that's tough. And science and medicine really needs to do this so that they can understand how to fix it. So first, there are different types of pain, right? There's acute and chronic pain. Acute pain is sometimes intense, but it doesn't have to be. And it's usually uh, associated with some sort of injury and it's probably short-lived. Chronic pain is when that acute pain continues for a long period of time or repeats again and again. So there are two different classifications of pain and then two subclassifications of each. There's nociceptive and non-nociceptive pain. Another etymology break here. Nociceptive or nociception is pain reception. Comes from the Latin word for hurt. And etymology break. So nociceptive pain is when pain receptors that sense things like temperature or vibration, they're damaged or they're disturbed in some way. It's a physical stimuli. Uh, again, we're gonna get back to the neurobiology part in a little bit, but we're coming back to it, don't worry. Non-nociceptive pain is something that comes from the nervous system itself. It's called non-nociceptive pain because there is no specific pain receptor that's been tripped. The pain pathway isn't what's being attacked, it's something else. Essentially, there could be messy signals in your nervous system that your brain interprets as pain. We get nociception as pain reception, and there are two types of both of these nociceptive and non-nociceptive pains. The first two for nociceptive pain are somatic and visceral. Somatic pain is musculoskeletal pain. It's pain in the skin and the bones and muscles and ligaments and joints. It's stuff that you can pretty much guarantee you've probably experienced, right? It's confined, it's localized, it hurts when you move an affected area. Some examples are like if you sprain your ankle or you, know, you fracture your arm of some kind or you cut yourself or you have cramps, you know, all of those things are somatic nociceptive pain. Then there's visceral nociceptive pain. 
and that's pain in the internal organs. So in the cavities of your body, the thorax, the lung and the heart, or the abdomen, which is the bowels and the spleen, the liver and the kidneys. So if you're feeling like your stomach hurts, right? Or you have like digestive distress and it kind of hurts, that would be visceral pain, visceral nociceptive pain. That also counts for the pelvis, like ovaries and bladder, and also the womb. Visceral pain is harder to locate than somatic pain because it's in that kind of gray area that is the torso, right? It's harder to pinpoint, and a really common visceral pain is pain in your back because it's not necessarily connected to the joints of your back. It might be a muscle in there. It might be, you know, any number of things. And then there are two types of non-nociceptive pain, neuropathic pain, also known as nerve pain. You sometimes in layman terms would call it a pinched nerve. That's a type of chronic pain, if you remember chronic from a few minutes ago. It originates from the central nervous system and it happens when nerve fibers become damaged. The wrong signals are sent to the pain centers and the pain centers attribute that to pain, right? This is why non-nociceptive pain is, is strange because the brain interprets those crossed signals as best it can, and that comes out as pain. Nerve degeneration can also cause neuropathic pain, so something that might happen during a stroke or for people who are suffering from MS. And then there's sympathetic pain. That's the fourth kind, and that deals with the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system controls blood flow to skin and muscles and heartbeats and you know things like that, things you're not thinking about. The sympathetic neurons act with the peripheral nervous system. So this is non-nociceptive pain because there are no actual pain receptors there. You know, you can't necessarily feel your heart going right now because that would be weird and distracting. This is just nervous systems firing off random abnormal signals to the brain, which then it would interpret as pain. Sympathetic pain usually happens around injuries, which is really cool, because think of the, I mean, it's not cool, it, it sucks, but it also is kind of cool, because like think the skin around a fracture, that might hurt, and it's tough to nail it down. Actually, again, no pun intended on that, don't do that. But pain is basically, uh, in this case, a lot of brain signal interpretation. And if that's how we classify it, right, if pain is all of these different things, we have to figure out how to measure what that is, especially, again, in medicine and science. So we've all seen those crazy pain assessment tools. You've probably been to the doctor's office and either seen one on the wall or even in a movie. You know, it starts at zero with like a happy, smiling person, and then that person gets progressively more disturbed until at the 10 end of the pain assessment, they're shouting or crying or they've turned red or whatever it is, it sounds terrible. But that's pretty subjective. There has to be faces because with faces, we can see people's pain. We understand and we can empathize. And if you're empathizing with that character, you're probably a six, you know, or if you're empathizing with that character, you're a one or a two, right? But it's always been so subjective and so problematic because patients may not have the cognitive power to judge their own pain accurately based on what they're looking at. And they could overstate or understate their pain. There's a great Brian Regan skit about how that can be problematic. It wasn't really an industry standard pain scale, and it can vary slightly depending on the doctor and who's given that doctor that pain scale. In 2013, though, neuroscientists from the University of Colorado Boulder, NYU, Johns Hopkins University, and the University of Michigan got together, and they looked at functional MRI scans of 114 participants, and they were subjected to a painful dose of heat. Essentially, they put something on their skin and they burned them for science. Ethics. It actually did pass an ethics board. This was real. This is real science. You could not pay me enough to do this. But they did find a neurologic signature. They studied those signatures and they were able to distinguish from other experiences that were also dealing with senses. So they could find pain hidden within people's experiences. They were able to actually predict then pain intensity with 95% accuracy, which is actually crazy because that brings pain out of a subjective scale and into an, a more objective and empirical measure. Then you can say, I'm sorry, you're not actually experiencing that much pain. You're experiencing a four based on these readings of what your brain is telling us as opposed to what you may be telling us, which sounds kind of crappy when you put it that way. But in reality, there are a number of different problems with giving people too much painkiller and, and, and all of these different things that a brain test can solve. But what exactly is happening to the body if the brain is saying, oh my God, I'm in pain? 
What is happening in there, right? We've talked a lot today about the pain pathways and getting pain to and from there, but we haven't broken it down. So that's what we're gonna do tomorrow. Make sure you come back so you get that episode tomorrow. Make sure you subscribe so you get the next episode after that and all the episodes that we keep on doing for you. Thanks for watching D News Plus, everybody. What was the most painful thing you ever had happen to you? I'm trying to think of what mine was. I sat on a grandfather clock once, that hurt a lot. I cut my finger open once, that hurt a lot too. But it only hurts for a little bit, and then it stops hurting. Tell us yours in the comments, make sure you keep coming back here, like I said, and we'll see you next time on D News Plus.